Everyone's talking about how AI is a huge tsunami wiping out our jobs. They're wrong. As a tech CEO and a board member, I have helped build billion dollar companies. And here's the truth, tech jobs aren't disappearing, they're shifting. This is exactly how you land a tech job in 2025. My first point, doomsday isn't real. Everyone is saying tech jobs are dead, but that's not just wrong, it's misleading. Tech jobs are not dead, but they have changed. Influencers love pushing doomsday scenario. Tech world is over, AI has won, so pack your bags, but remember, Many of these YouTubers are in the business of selling fear, not facts. The last two years have been rough. No sugar coating it. Microsoft X10,000, Google slash 12,000, Meta fired 21,000. Unemployment in tech in the US spiked up to 5.7%, still above the national average of 4%. So that is a turbulence, but it's not a crash. It's not annihilation. Some roles are fading, but new ones are emerging. Companies aren't eliminating tech jobs, they're shifting their priorities. The number one fastest growing job according to LinkedIn AI engineer. Second in line, AI consultant. This isn't evaporation, it's evolution. The only question is, are you evolving with it? Next up, point two. The skills that got you hired five years ago, today they won't even get you an interview. AI isn't replacing jobs, it's rebalancing it. AI is changing the landscape in terms of which skills are in demand and which aren't. So take coding for example. Entry level software engineering jobs are down 35% while generative AI jobs have surged 170%. Well, it comes down to this concept called verifiable domain, because AI crushes tasks with simple, clear, defined rules. It can write, test, debug code at a speed and scale that humans simply cannot even match. So trying to land an entry-level coding job today is like selling a typewriter to someone who's using an iPhone. And it's not just coding. I see similar shifts happening in product management, in UX roles, even the gender dynamics are shifting. Women used to make up 20% of engineering, but 30% of AI consultants today are women. As a father of a daughter and someone who's kind of tired of this tech bro culture, I couldn't be happier about that trend. So if the game is changing, why train for yesterday's job? Wayne Gretzky said it best, skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. Third point, AI isn't just writing code, it's rewriting rules of who gets hired and who gets left behind. If you are struggling to get hired, go for the brand new jobs created by AI. Here are two real world stories. One tech company I work with adopted AI coding tools, GitHub Copilot and Cursor. They were using Sonnet. Almost overnight, their engineers became dramatically more productive in terms of code generation, testing, debugging, launching products. So now you would think that the CEO needs fewer engineers, right? But here's the twist. They need more engineers, just a different kind. Those who can stitch together these AI tools, those who can build systems, those who can keep the productivity gains flowing. AI didn't shrink the demand, it just shifted it. And here's another story of a real world paradox. I was having dinner with an AI startup founder and he was super excited. He said, Sandeep, my company today can build more functionality with fewer engineers than ever before. The cost of building a software product has come down dramatically. But the problem I have is that I can't hire great talent fast enough. And I was surprised and I said, why is that? He said, because the same cost savings apply to all companies, right? There are 10 times more tech companies out there chasing engineers now. And that's the paradox. AI makes building software easier, but instead of needing fewer engineers, we need more of them because we now have 10 times more companies competing for engineering talent. And the demand for talent is skyrocketing. So the real question is not if AI will take over your old tech job, it's whether you will use AI to create a new one. Point number four, you don't need to know how to code to take advantage of AI-driven opportunities. If you just know how to code, that won't get you hired in tech today. The truth is that today, AI is already better at coding than most engineers in the world. I've seen companies actively looking for people who understand AI not just engineers who can code. This is creating so many new opportunities. It's creating new job categories. What would this new world of AI plus humans actually look like? Let's take three examples so we can hash out how the roles get divided. Let's take the role of an entry-level coder. In this case, AI will write, 
test, debug the code, but you as a human still have to provide the right context, adapt it to the project, connect with other components in the system. Job number two, product manager. AI will make predictions, analyze competitors, surface trends, but you, the human, will still have to define the vision, steer the product lifecycle, and manage stakeholders to build what truly matters. Number three, let's take a product marketing manager. AI will generate text and video content at scale, run A-B tests, analyze engagements, but you, the human, will have to define the brand, shape the narrative, create strategies that resonate beyond the numbers. So that's the exciting new world where human intelligence and artificial intelligence come together as partners to build the future. But that's not all. The best jobs of the future haven't even been invented yet. Think about this. Before the internet, no one could have imagined a role called web developer. Today, everyone takes it for granted. AI will do the same. New careers will emerge in so many new fields like AI safety, observability, ethics, AI tooling, operations, and many more. The real risk here is not that you're getting replaced by AI, it's that you're getting replaced by someone who understands AI better than you. And my fifth point, your degree doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Your degree won't lend you a job in 2025, this will. We all know the stories. Bill Gates dropped out of college and Sergey Brin had a PhD from Stanford. They both succeeded gloriously, but let's be real. Their paths were exceptions not the rule. For the rest of us getting into tech, I still believe that some technical degree helps you build a foundation of critical thinking, of problem solving. Companies value that. But here's the catch. A degree alone is not going to be enough anymore. You know, tech is becoming more like the world of rap and hip hop now. Like a rapper, you of course need math skills, but you also need street cred. And don't worry, you don't need to have a criminal record to build your reputation. Here's your five-step plan to build your street cred in tech. Number one, contribute to open source projects. Number two, build your own AI-driven systems and projects that you can demo. Number three, get hands-on experience with open source AI models like Llama, Minstrel, go deeper. Number four, learn from the best AI minds like Andrew Ang, Andre Karpathy. Learn about diffusion models, RAG, Vibe Coding, MOE. AI is evolving so rapidly, it's becoming a full-time job to just stay in the loop. And number five, master the softer human skills, communication, collaboration, teamwork, business acumen. They are more important today than ever before. A degree will put you in the studio, but your street cred puts you on the charts. Here are the three key takeaways from all of this. Number one, tech jobs aren't dying. They're evolving, so stay calm, stay sharp, stay adaptable. Number two, if you want to work in tech in 2025, master AI, AI tools, build real AI projects, and create proof of skills. And number three, the world of AI is changing at the speed of light. Your real differentiator is in learning how to learn fast. And if you want to move faster, check out my video on the 20 cheat codes that I learned in my tech career over the last 25 years. You'll find it useful. If this content was helpful, subscribe to my channel. I'm here every week with in-depth videos like this. Thank you, and I love you.